The last few years of Charles Oliveira's career have been intensely emotional, and his victory at UFC 289 was no different. I'm in Vancouver and was all last week covering 289, and now that I'm a couple days removed and the dust from Saturday has settled, when I look back, the thing that sticks out in my mind the most is being so surprised to see the crowd's resoundingly positive reaction to Charles Oliveira. Nothing made me happier to see it, but I did find myself wondering why this seems to be happening, and in Canada of all places. Why is he all of a sudden getting these massive pops from the crowd, unlike he ever has in his entire career all of a sudden? It eventually dawned on me that we are at an interesting point in time of this sport as UFC approaches its 30th anniversary. With the bursts in MMA's popularity over the years, a lot of the talk and attention is focused on all the new fans the sport has gained over the past few years. All the while, forgetting that there is a massive percentage of the fan base that are people who have followed this sport for a very long time now. Maybe it's because the older audience isn't as active on social media or just don't seem to be as present in the online sphere, or maybe it's for other reasons altogether, but at least speaking for myself, I think I kind of take for granted how big the percentage of the fan base are people who are longtime fans of this sport. There is a significant part of the audience that have been following Charles throughout his entire 13 years with the UFC. And the fact that he has reached his peak after so long and after so many setbacks resonates with the fan base in a very profound way. A lot of people remember when Oliveira was the youngest person on the UFC roster and the most highly touted prospect. People remember back in 2013 when the biggest prospects in the featherweight division were Dustin Poirier, Max Holloway, and Charles Oliveira. The spotlight shined on Holloway and Poirier for many years from 2013 onward as they progressed and met their potential. Meanwhile, Oliveira was kind of in the dark having many difficulties and career lows that saw him fly under the radar for many years. And now, after 13 years in the UFC, it feels as though Dubronx is truly just arriving. And what he's been able to accomplish at this point in his career in the fashion in which he has done it is something that everyone is finally starting to appreciate. I can't stress enough how much I was blown away by Oliveira all fight week long. A number of little subtle moments are etched in my memory that made me have a newfound appreciation for a fighter I already admired probably more than any other fighter on the roster. Since his first title fight against Michael Chandler, every time Oliveira enters the octagon, he goes and shakes the hand of his opponent and their corners. While I know the inclination is for people to believe this gesture is a respectful one, I did always consider the possibility that it was some sort of power move or psychological warfare and can really never say for sure. But it wasn't until I was sitting cage side on Saturday night, right behind Dariush's corner, that I saw that the acknowledgement to the other coaches upon entering the octagon was one of the warmest embraces I've witnessed the entire week. Seeing that kind of love and respect just minutes before these two engaged in a ridiculous chaotic fight was a mesmerizing moment. Not to mention the frenetic four minutes of a fight we got to see, all ending with Oliveira clanking a head kick on Dariush. Benil had his guard up, but it didn't matter. It wobbled him, and Oliveira cracked him with the right hook, sending him to the mat and Z drubbed his head into the canvas until the ref came to his rescue. And after that insanely intense moment, Oliveira's first move after the fight was waved off was getting to the door of the octagon to let Rafael Correro in the octagon to be able to check on Benil Dariush. Oliveira is completely genuine. He jumped into the fire against one of the most dangerous fighters on the roster, bared it all in one of the most inspiring performances we've ever seen. I don't have any limiting beliefs on a star potential being affected by not being able to speak English. Anderson Silva was the biggest thing going at one point, and some people don't realize it wasn't until Silva knocked out Vitor Belfort that he really broke through and became a massive star in Brazil, and his profile in the Western world reached new heights. And that's when Silva was 36. Oliveira is entering that very same territory at just 33 years old. The seemingly sudden burst in popularity makes all the sense in the world. Du Bronx has stayed grounded and stayed true to himself throughout his entire career. And he's now reaping the rewards of those honorable ways as he hits his peak as this sport's popularity is at an all-time high. So what should be next? Give Oliveira and the fans the opportunity for another incredible chapter of this story. We all deserve to see it. Over the years, we've seen our fair share of unwarranted rematches. You have to strike while the iron is hot. Oliveira deserves the chance for redemption and the next lightweight title shot. And I'll tell you right now, you are crazy if you think Oliveira doesn't have the ability to clip Makachev and get him out of there. And this isn't the recency bias speaking. I'm not trying to pat myself on the back here. I've been wrong plenty in my life. But in my pieces over the years, I've been picking Oliveira to beat everyone he's faced since before his fight with Kevin Lee. And in a couple of cases, specifically picking him to win by knockout or submission. He most certainly can beat Makachev, and I think the UFC owes it to themselves, the fans, and Oliveira to give us an opportunity to bear witness to this fight right now. 
Inspiring story and record-breaking career aside, what's most important is that Dubronx has earned it with nothing more than the merit of his performances. It just so happens that he's also the most compelling person in the promotion right now. The long-term and meaningful growth of this sport doesn't come from the fighters trying to be personalities, cutting promos and post-fight interviews and doing whatever else it is everybody feels a need they have to do these days. It's moments like the ones created by Du Bronx at UFC 289 that are winning over a new audience and embedding the fan base with inspiration and astonishment.